All right, good to go. So when I say community engagement, I mean any activity done in a community with the intention of producing positive change. Most call it community service if local, or development work if abroad. It could be anything from working as a volunteer nurse in a small hospital to drilling water wells in a village that lacks clean water. I am currently serving as the vice president of the Montana State University chapter of Engineers Without Borders. Our chapter is a student-led organization that has been working in rural Kenya for the last 10 years. We drill water wells and build composting latrines to help bring clean water and sanitation to the schools that need it most. Now, development work is certainly a well-intentioned endeavor, but it does not always create positive change. Two professors at Berkeley and the University of Washington found that about half the water projects implemented in Kenya during the 80s were defunct by 2000. In EWB, we have struggled to implement sustainable and impactful latrines. Now, I know that I'm only 20 years old and that I don't have very much experience. Hell, I'm still in that phase where I'm growing my hair out as some sort of rebellion tactic. <laughs> but regardless, I also know that my peers and I devote a lot of our free time to EWB, and we are always doing everything we can to ensure that our projects are the best they can be. Over the last decade, we have seen a lot of problems with development work, both in our organization and others. And we have done a lot to create solutions to those problems. And our solutions are always changing because the communities we work with are too. And that is why we see it necessary to rethink community engagement. As Paulo Freire, a famous anthropologist, once said, freedom is acquired by conquest, not by gift. Freedom from poverty, the bettering of oneself, is not acquired by gift. It's acquired by hard work. And development work has done a lot to give gifts and a lot less to inspire conquest. Many development projects have been like gifts to communities that either didn't want them or didn't know what to do with them. In our organization, we have made similar mistakes by not fully utilizing the ambitions or addressing the questions of the people we were trying to help. We were working for the community rather than with it. And as a result, we started to struggle with some unforeseen problems. Some communities didn't treat the projects as if they were their own. One time, we returned to a well we implemented and found out that one part had been broken for almost a year. It would have been an easy and cheap fix, but the school did not take action. They seemed to think that we were responsible for fixing it and that we would always come back to help. We always want our projects to work properly, but are we really helping the community if it is forever reliant on our continued presence? Many communities expect us to maintain the projects that we implement, but this is not how development work should be or can be done. Many communities that already have projects continue to ask us for more, and it's the same problem all over again. It's like they would rather wait for our projects than initiate their own. And of course, this problem is not unique. Thousands of aid organizations have faced this problem in projects around the world. And so we've all heard the saying, give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. But what if he doesn't even like fish? <laughs> the most critical aspect determining the success of a development project is whether the project is wanted by the community in the first place. An example would be the 1971 Lake Turkana project in northwestern Kenya. It aimed to provide jobs to the, for the Turkana people through fishing and fish processing for export. However, as the project managers clearly overlooked, the Turkana are nomads with no history of fishing or even eating fish. <laughs> and consequently, the project was a complete failure. Now, most aid projects start with a request from the community. In our organization, each project starts with a request from the school where it is to take place. That way, we never have to worry about a failure as drastic as the Lake Turkana incident. However, it is still possible to create a solution to the wrong problem. So how do we make sure we're always addressing the right problem? We devote an entire travel trip to just doing assessment, getting to know the land and the people. We spend the weeks meeting with the school officials, parents, and even the school children although with the children, we usually just lose soccer games. And this kind of assessment takes a lot of time, more than if we were to decide everything ourselves. But the speed or number of projects is irrelevant. The quality of projects is the only real indicator of good work. 
But when I say quality, I'm not just speaking in terms of the final product, but also in terms of what we call community buy-in. Buy-in is our measure of the community's willingness to work with us, from the first handshake to the last brick. It is about the community's perception of us and themselves. It's about building a relationship with the locals, especially with the ones who will be responsible for the project after we leave. We see the assessment phase as building the social foundation for the project, the foundation that the physical project will inevitably stand on. The integrity of the finished product is extremely important, but not as much as the commitment of those who will or will not take care of it for years to come. Our assessment process essentially puts the brakes on the way we used to do projects. We are slowing down to ensure that we and the community work together. We are doing our best to metaphorically teach them how to fish, assuming they like fish, of course, because the whole point of development work is to help people help themselves. This presentation uses the words community engagement because I wanted it to apply to more than just international development work. There are many projects that can be done in one's hometown, say Bozeman, for instance. I believe that everyone, wherever they are, can do their part to make this world a better place. However, whether it be homework answers to a struggling student or development projects to a community that relies on outside help, just giving something to somebody doesn't necessarily positively change the situation. The best way to help somebody is to help them help themselves. After all, Gifts are temporary, but conquest is forever.